fowl farming can be fun and profitable if managed at the same time correctly. This week on The Ghanaian Farmer, we are going to discuss the breeding and hatching of guinea fowl. My name is Enyanam and this is the Northern Region edition of The Ghanaian Farmer. Specifically, we are in Tamale. And we are having a conversation with a breeder and at the same time, someone who is into hatching. So it is done at his end before moved to the farmer to continue from there. So if you don't see uh, a huge guinea fowl behind us, it is because as a season in the northern region, the weather is not conducive. It is not too good to start hatching at this time because the birds will die. So from around March, April, that is the season for hatching the eggs. So don't ask me, and you know, I'm not, hey, where are the guinea fowls? You will see them, the pictures and the videos of what he has done previously. So get interactive on our social media platform on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube, The Ghanaian Farmer. Going for a quick bit, when I come back, Mr. Isifu uh, is right here with me, and he will explain the process of hatching or breeding the eggs from the little stage before it is moved to the farmer. I'll tell you this and more. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Thanks for staying. If you just tuned in, you're watching The Ghanaian Farmer. My name is Enyunam, and seated next to me is Isifu Basidin, and he is hatch, uh, he's a hatcher and a breeder of guinea fowl. Isifu, thanks for joining me. Okay. Now, when we say hatching yeah. or breeding of guinea fowl, yes. what are we referring to? Yes, thank you very much. Mm. As you mentioned, my name is Isifu Basidin. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a guinea fowl hatcher mm -hmm. and brooder. Okay. This means that I have come to realize that this area of production mm -hmm. has a pothole okay. or loophole mm. in that people have problems as to that area as to hatching their bears and breeding them to a certain stage of mm. their life. Mm. And mostly we do that within six weeks. Mm. So hatching meaning that we have incubators that we go around, collect the eggs, mm. and then we'll hatch them mm -hmm. for people who need them at day old, okay. people who need them at two, one week, people who need them at two weeks up to six weeks. Okay. So this supply is made based on the person's request. request. So because we have realized that a lot of people don't have the know-how as to the management of this stage of their bad life. The early stages. Of their bad life. Okay. So we we'll boost them at this mm -hmm. stage mm -hmm. and then transfer them to the request the person farmer. or the farmer mm -hmm. for him to or her to continue. Okay. Yeah. How do you come by the eggs you hatched? Um, in the northern region, we have uh, areas that we have a lot of guinea fowls. So we have linkages around. Mm. And therefore, we usually have agents around those communities. Mm. So that mostly we give out money when the eggs are coming. Okay. So that that agent will go around mm -hmm. the farmers, mm -hmm. collect this egg daily, mm -hmm. when they are mostly like daily when the eggs is up to twenty, mm -hmm. where people sell their eggs at twenties, okay. twenty pieces. Okay, so you a have people price. who specifically yes. sell the eggs yes. for Hatch, the hatches for for hatches to also go for and hatch yes. before they also sell to, yes, to the farmers. Do we have varieties of guinea fowl? Yes, in the northern region, mm -hmm. we in the northern region particular, mm -hmm. we have a particular guinea fowl. But when we, our studies across the three northern region, mm -hmm. we have about four categories of guinea fowl. What are they? Can you mention the names? Uh, they are not by name per okay. se, but they are by about their production levels. Okay. When you look at the northern guinea fowl. Mm -hmm. It, is, it doesn't lay more, okay. and it doesn't look small. It okay. is medium. Okay. And when you look at again, Upper East, we have two categories of guinea fowls in Upper East. We have the guinea fowl coming from 
the blood in the nearby Boko area. They look very big and also doesn't lay more. And when you come to, let's say, the Bongo area, coming to Bolga and the rest, Sandema and the rest, they also have a certain type of guinea fowl. They lay more, but they don't look big as the northern region one. Okay. And when you go to Upper West, we have another guinea fowl. That type looks uh, the check check type. It has more whiteies amount and then uh, ash color. Which one do we have right behind you? Uh, this one is the northern type. This is the northern type. The, the northern type. We have more of this in the northern region. Okay. And more of this in the upper east. The both two sections. Mm. But upper west, they are more more colors. All right. <laughs> and okay. they also they lay more, mm. but look very small. All right. So these are the differences. So among these four, yes, all of it is being rare in the northern region. Yes. Okay. So when you buy the eggs yeah. and take it to your farm, yes, and then fix them into the hatchery machine, yeah, how many days does it take before the egg break for the baby? guinea fowl to come out um when you an egg has a duration mm -hmm. the duration is 28 days okay but due to the environmental condition a certain period of the year mm -hmm. the egg can be even hatched within 20 days so when the egg hatched yeah first of all how many eggs does a guinea fowl leave uh, One a, guinea fowl. a survey was made, uh -huh. and it's like because the guinea fowl has a nature, it doesn't lay continuously. Okay. It can lay maybe two, three days continuously and stop maybe one day. Some will lay today, tomorrow it will lay. Mm. So, so, on uh, an average, on an average, maybe about 100 eggs, 100 to 150 eggs per the season. One guinea fowl? Yes, one guinea fowl. Can lay 100 eggs? Yes. Okay. Within the season, because it lay between April mm, all to, the way to August. August. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, meaning you, you one guinea fowl can lay up to hundred eggs between this zone. Yes, this zone. Okay. Yes. All right, that's fine. Yeah. So after the egg is hatched, yeah, what happens next? At that stage, you need to take it to the brooder house or brooder place. Okay. So that um, the guinea fowl. At the brooder point, need certain factors. Mm. That is conditional factors, feed and the rest. Mm. It need a very good feed. Mm. It need a very good environment, hygienic environment. That will read a temperature between 34 to 38, mm. like the incubation, mm -hmm. and reduce maybe two by every week until maybe six weeks when you totally you take the temperature the, the heat source completely out, out of the system mm. so this place because the guinea fowl is not fatty and it doesn't feather fast like the the, the the chicken this is the reason why you need a very long period of heat supply to the breeding system okay. And with this stage, you need a better feeding, very because because they are hard birds, they are not like the chicken, so you need very quality, balanced feed. And therefore, now our survey or our study have come to realize that you will use feed like magic feed or broiler mash, your brooding will be very, very, very nice. All right. So yeah. the two feed you mentioned, do you prepare yeah. or you buy? I buy. At okay. this stage, I buy. All right. So, yeah. uh, viewers, you're still watching The Ghanaian Farmer. My name is Enyonam, and seated next to me is Isifu Basidin. He is a guinea fowl breeder and hatcher, and we are discussing, if you want to go into this line of farming, what you need to know. And at this season, you might not see a lot of the guinea fowl in his farm currently because guinea fowls cannot lay around this time due to the weather that we have in the north presently but we will come back somewhere around march april to give you a feel of 
when they start laying eggs and the hatching goes on. However, we we'll still give you videos and images of what he's done last year for you to see and match it with the information he's given. So, when the egg is hatched and you have your guinea fowls, the little ones now, how many times do you feed them in a day? Yes, um, the guinea fowl that to, from our experience, experience okay. uh, we feed them this about three times a day. Okay. And the three times is such that we feed them at uh, maybe when they are able to eat maybe two, two to three hours. Okay. Then the feed f get finished. Then they stay maybe one hour or two for us to bring another feed again. The same feed. That enables them to eat more mm -hmm. because they will see it as a fresh feed. You, you understand? It's just like uh, we human beings. If they prepare a teaser for me, maybe the whole teaser in a full flash for the whole day, uh, morning, afternoon, and the evening. You see that the intake taking the some in the morning, in the afternoon, the same teaser will be different than if they prepare fresh. In the morning fresh, then I eat. In the afternoon fresh, in the evening fresh. You see that my intake will be higher mm. than taking the, the same feed that is in the flat. Mm. It's the same thing as the bed. Okay. In the bed, you put more feed in, you calculate the whole day, and you put the feed in the feeding troughs. And it, it is at a certain period, it will start to smell itself in the feed, ah. which it will consider that the feed is old. Okay. So it starts to spoil and waste the feed. Because of this, we don't do that. Okay, you, you just feed them gradually. The feed, yeah. yes. You do it in proportions. In proportions. Okay. Right. So that they will eat more. Yeah. How much do you sell one little guinea fowl? Um, we have. The DO that last year was selling 380 per one. Yes. Okay. But that also depends on the season. Okay. Because the early seasons of the year, because the eggs is start coming, the price sometimes is higher. How much do you buy the eggs? It's last also year. Let's look yes. last year. Last year it also depends on the, the, the season. Mm. The early stages you can buy twenty for forty C. Then it reduces while the increase of the, the egg is increasing. Okay. So it re also reduces. Okay, the more the eggs in the system, the, the price comes lessons. down. Okay. Yes. And the scarce the, the eggs in the system, the higher the price. Okay. So this is how it's also. So we sell the case based on that. How much the eggs is sold to you? Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, at this point, if I want to start. Yeah farming or uh, rearing guinea fowl yeah. and I walk to you as a startup yeah. what do you advise? Do you advise I start with the little ones you are breeding or you are starting I get this matured ones rather? Yeah, this one I first I have to, I will have to know the sort of housing that Structure you have. have. What is for growing, it's for brooding mm -hmm. before I can now supply you the type of beds you can because you may not have the the, 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 the housing for brooding, okay. maybe for only growing. Okay. So I have to brood them to, for, to add a certain stage before you can pick them. How much does a guinea fowl cost in Tamale? Uh, the guinea fowl are sold based on the area. Sizes. The area and the, the, the sizes. Okay. Yes. Uh, for now, in Tamale at the market, okay. it's sold between 38 to 45. CDs. CDs. Per one. Per one. Okay. okay. And like you were saying, mm -hmm. based on the size, but mm -hmm. you just go to the, the seller, mm -hmm. just pick the bed and come and these are soldiers. Mm -hmm. There's no scale to weigh. To weigh no. Okay. You, you only hold it and then you also just examine. Mm -hmm. But you will not able to tell mm -hmm. what is the scale mm -hmm. of the bed. So it means that you don't have. A standard price. No, 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 no. I can choose my own price. You can also choose your own okay, price. Yes. Okay. But your price cannot work. You, the buyer, your price cannot work because you are coming to buy. If you okay. don't buy, 
can you can go to another person, another person. Right. and because they are within the same mm -hmm. place, mm -hmm. they have prices, the same prices for all the type of the best. Okay. Uh, In your case, as a breeder, yeah, you did said because you don't want them to waste it or yeah. feel the feed is old. Yeah. You give them in proportion yes, three yes. times a day. Yes. What happens to the matured ones? How many you, times do I feed them a day as well? You can and also do, do I also do the proportional feeding? Yes, yes, yes. You can okay. do that. You can okay. do that. Now, I realize there's rice grains on the ground. Yeah. What impact does it have on the birds? Yeah, it serves as a litter. Uh, 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 yes, as a litter. So that when the birds uh, uh, drop, mm -hmm. It doesn't f make the place very filthy. Okay. It mixes with the litter. Right. So this one is in the place of sawdust so okay. or okay. wood shaving. Right. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between a guinea fowl being kept in an enclosed place like this yeah. as against the one in the bush? Uh, you are talking on enclosed. You know, some, they allow them to just walk roam. Around. Yes. And they will not have the, the bush, bush one. one. Mm. Those that are allowed to move around, their growth, mm -hmm. their growth mm -hmm. is slow mm -hmm. because it may move around and it won't get any to eat. anything to eat. Okay. But then it has lost some energy, mm -hmm. which is at the end will reduce its size. Okay. But this one, they are at a, at a confined place mm -hmm. because of and you are giving them a balanced diet that will aid them to grow faster. Mm -hmm. But then. They would be too fatty, mm -hmm. and the meat will be soft, okay. unlike the one that is roaming okay. outside. Around. But also relate to those the bush ones mm -hmm. that are not rare. Mm -hmm. The difference between them is this one: the uh, the house guinea fowl is accommodated small because they can be you close. Can <laughs> but right. for them, they are mm -hmm. less maybe from hundred meters okay. away. Mm -hmm. And the other difference is that. They are their neck. Mm -hmm. Their neck doesn't have feathers, okay. and they doesn't have comb, okay. but this one has. All right. Mm -hmm. We're going for a breather. When I come back, we'll talk about infections that also affect guinea fowl. Okay. Uh, if there is any, because we know about poultry, yeah. bed, and yeah, the yeah. infections that they have. My name is Enyonam, and this is the Ghanaian farmer, the Northern Region Edition, specifically. We are in Tamale. This episode highlight, give you tips on how to go into guinea fowl farming. With poultry, we know about the infections that they have every year. Yeah. How about guinea fowl? Do you also have any infection that affect them? Actually, I've been hearing about the infection that is especially mm -hmm. the bird flu. Mm -hmm. But in the northern region, I don't think it's mostly at the southern from Kumasi, Sunyan and the mm -hmm. But for the northern region, I've never experienced bird flu. Mm -hmm. uh, only what, especially specific to guinea fowl, what I know is maybe three things like coxie, okay. uh, E. coli, mm -hmm. and then some bacterial infections. So what symptoms do I see to know that mm, my guinea fowl has an infection? Um, with coxie, mm -hmm. you see brownish droppings mm -hmm. with blood stains, and then with E. coli, you see very white droppings. Mm -hmm. That will tell you that it's suffering from E. coli mm -hmm. and other. So because of that, the bed, like we, we, we have to know, mm -hmm. the bed is not like mm -hmm. human being when it sleep and they break. And so much of the observations of these droppings. Mm -hmm. That will guide you as to the management of the bed. Mm. So that if the droppings, you know that maybe a normal healthy guinea fowl or fowl uh, droppings mm -hmm. is supposed to be hard. Okay. And then maybe some water small by it or hard and you can see some white dot okay. on it. Okay. That tells you that There's this no is a normal okay. uh, healthy but bed. But anything about uh, you should... Okay. Be alarmed. In that case, how many times do I invite, uh, uh, how do you call it, is this veterinarian yeah. to pass by my farm and inspect my Oh, bed? with that one, because like I was saying, mm. it cannot, if, if it's sick, it cannot come and tell you, mm. you need to have a, 
let's say it a, 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 a time period, maybe okay. every month mm. the vet should come around, or a certain period you need to give this type of mm. medication or vaccination okay. <laughs> across okay. the year. Are there any challenges associated with rearing guinea fowl? Mm, challenges. For now, the challenges, as like you said, mm -hmm. is about the season. Okay. Well, if like this time of the season, the guinea fowl is laying, mm. and one is able to hatch this time, your management system will be down okay. in the system in the in the, in the in the way that this time of the year bacteria is low okay. because of the weather atmosphere is dry. Right. You know, bacteria is mostly prone in the rainy season because oh. the weather is very cool. Mm. So if you hide them this time, so because of that, people that their eggs or they have eggs small, small around this time, they have very low hatchability, okay. but high survivability. Okay. You can hatch 20, out of 20, you can get 5 or 6, 7 hatch. But you, it may happen to you have the whole 7 survive. No mortality. Okay. Yeah, but in the rainy season, you can have all the 20 set hatch. Okay. But may have nothing survive. I see. Yes. Have you experienced that before? Oh, at the early stage of my my work, okay. I was experiencing that. I see. But now I know mm. because of this, it means that at that time you need to put a lot of hey. measures and then mm. so that you'll be able to contain mm. that. Okay. So the machine you use for hatching, you yes. showed us the machine. What do you use to power it so that there can be constant heat um, around the beds? Yes, it's, it's uh, electricity. Okay. And when there's a light yeah. off, then you, you have to put How on your generator. How much does one machine cost? It depends on the, the, the capacity. Is it locally manufactured or you buy from abroad? It's locally tamale made, tissue made. Oh, I see. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting far. So, uh, can you give me an estimate? Somebody will uh, uh, estimate. Like How much should I be holding if I want to buy some of the machine you're using? Uh, with the 200 capacity, mm -hmm. if you hold maybe 1,006 and above, you can get Do you one. sell the machine as well? Yes, that is what, that is the, this time okay, of the Okay, so if I season, order from you, you can get You some. order 10 days, I supply you. Oh, okay. Yes. That's fine. Would you say guinea fowl farming is profitable? Actually. Me, when I finished my diploma program, I didn't, I wanted to be self-employed, so I just went direct into What's that. educational background? I just ended a polytechnic. Polytechnic, a, yeah. a polytechnic student yes. or graduate yes. becomes a guinea fowl hatcher. I am yes. reader. Yes. Congratulations. You're welcome. For, <laughs> for such a bold step, putting yeah. your certificates aside yeah. and going into hatching and breeding of guinea fowl. Yeah. Well done. Now, quickly, if I want to go into guinea fowl yeah. farming, yeah. hatching or breeding, yeah. how much capital should I hold in my hands? It will depend on the size of farming you want to start with. Okay. Mm. So let's take it, uh, you want to start maybe 100 guinea fowls. At least we are holding like 1,000. Okay. You can start. 1,000? 1, 1,000. Including my structure? No, 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 no. It doesn't... No, 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 no. Okay. This one is for only even the bears okay. up to maybe growth. Mm. Here you are holding 1,000 mm. because maybe mm. you are buying the bears mm. and maybe four cities because this year we are going maybe four cities per day old okay. and you can use the remaining one for feeding medication not in, but yeah. what's the difference between poultry farming and guinea fowl if you're giving that which one will you choose poultry farming and guinea fowl yeah. guinea fowl that i'll choose you choose guinea fowl Why? yes the reason is uh, guinea fowl tastes good uh -huh. The market is always available. Okay. Now, the, even the layer, the uh, span layers, mm -hmm. 20, 20 cities here, 20, 18 cities, 22 cities, 20, up to 30 cities. But the guinea fowl, mm -hmm. you can it's between 30 and above. Okay. And the moment, you can catch guinea fowl from this place to town mm -hmm. without getting a buyer. Mm -hmm. But you can take a, fa a, a guinea fowl to the market, a, a fowl to the fa uh, market and bring it back without <laughs> getting a buyer. All right, your last words to our viewers. It's been an insightful conversation. Your last words to our viewers. Uh, what do you um, have to tell the younger ones who are out there saying, there is no job in the country. If a polytechnic student can put aside his certificate and go into farming, what do you have to tell your viewers? Actually, like we say, like uh, uh, there's no work. Actually, 
I don't trust in that. Like, for instance, like when you came home, you saw me now getting into fish farming. I started this year last April last year. But well, I came to realize that there are some bad products within the pottery in the uh, rearing, which are always with like the infertile eggs, the dead in shells, and the rest. Usually we go to throw them away. That's why that I, I quickly jump into rearing of fish. So that when the, 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 the let's say the, the fertile, infertile eggs are not hatched, I parboil them and use them to supplement my, my fish. Okay. And the dead in shell, I use that also to, uh, to supply my fish. And also those that, if unfortunately some die, I parboil them and I use them for my fish. Oh, yeah. So whatever, you should always not sit down to look, government, government. Who is government? I and you, we are government. And if, let's say, everybody is able to create his own small work, there wouldn't be unemployment. Everybody will be employed. Oh, right. So, uh, and you have to start by at least whatever capital you have. Don't wait to get big money before you start. Oh, right. I started small by one pound. Mm -hmm. Now, how many pounds did you see in my house? Just within one year. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm to struggle. I need to have water, let's say, a borehole, mm -hmm. let's say, get a, a, a feed a pellet machine before. But I have to start somewhere before I can get that. Okay. So everybody should start small. Okay. You can grow. That brings us to the end of our discussion on guinea fowl farming.